I keep it getting asked about, is there a real estate bubble? How do I know if there's a real estate bubble? What's the next, you know, what's, what's going to happen next in the marketplace? When the market crashed, gosh, how many years ago was it now? Almost 10 years ago, the market began to crash. Um, before that, I was a young guy in my 20s. I started a, I had a $10 million construction company. I had a plumbing co uh, contracting business. I had a demolition company. Um, I used to sell leads online through the, uh, through the radio, read radio ads and sold leads to other contractors. I had like five different businesses going on. A lot of, um, just a lot of really, really good success. On top of that, I was flipping homes. I was doing real estate development and just really doing real estate investing as a full-time basis. So when in my 20s, I had the uh, good fortune to do really well and to have some real successes in my life at a young age. On the other hand, I also had the disfortune or the unfortunate situation to start thinking that I was Midas. Like everything I touched just turned to gold. Everything I touched started making money. And, um, and that's also a bad thing. So we wanted to you know, temper that. But when the real estate market crashed, I made it my business, my intention, my 100% focus to learn how that happened, what happened during that crisis, and how I could predict any of that kind of uh, uh, turmoil or problem coming in the future. And I studied it for years. I studied it for years very intently right after the, the market began to crash. And I continue to do so on a regular and consistent basis because I owe it not only to myself and the people that work with me and work for me to make sure that we are a stable and solid investment company, but I also owe it to my investors, which a lot of which are all my friends and my family and, and people you know that know me. And so it's my responsibility to be able to look out and see what's coming in the marketplace. So with that, let's talk about, let's talk bubble talk as my, my buddy Will talks, uh, told, called, it, called it to me this morning. So we'll talk about bubble, bubble talk. Um, is there a bubble coming? Do I believe we're in a bubble? My answer right now is it depends on where you live. Each market in real estate is separate. Each, each market has its own economy. Markets that are growing in jobs um, probably are not facing a bubble right now. Markets that, have, that are losing jobs and maybe have some overpriced houses, those might be in a, in a, um, in experiencing some kind of a bubble right now. But uh, I'm going to show you how you can identify which is which. So as I'm driving to, uh, driving to the office this morning, I've got, uh, I've got some white get my whiteboard out, a new blackboard actually, my dry erase, I'm actually loving this thing. Um, so here's what I did. I'm driving in this morning and I'm thinking about what, what I wanna to talk to you all about today. And so I started thinking about this affordability index and how uh, you can calculate this super quickly. So I ran these numbers, I'm gonna show you how to do it. I just, I Googled, I used Google and found a lot of this data that I'm about to give you. You can, I'm gonna use it for my, my local market where our office is called Santa Clarita, California. <laughs> We're in the northern tip of LA County um, in Southern California. And uh, you can use this same affordability index math problem that I'm about to give you no matter where you live. So check it out. The first thing that I looked up for uh, Santa Clarita is the uh, median household income. And then next, what I looked up was the median, and it's M-E-D, uh, yeah, I-A-N, median. Not medium with an M, but median with an N. So when you're Googling it, that'll make a difference. Medium household income, and then medium home price, and then just in, in, insert the name of the city right there. So in Santa Clarita, the, um, let me see if I got these down right, the median home price is 497,000 and the median income is just about 84,000, uh, 83,000 and some change. So these two numbers are gonna be factors in what we're gonna be talking about. Now here's what we're gonna be factoring. Here's what we're gonna be figuring out. At what point in time will the regular folks, median people, that means people in the middle, right? At what point in time will the middle class people be priced out of the middle class homes in any, in any given market, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out how much of a mortgage can you get if you make $84,000 a year? And that's household income. That might be two couples, or, or I should say one couple, it might be one person, something like that, is with 20% down, which is about 100 grand on a $500,000 purchase, um, the payment on this would be about $2,500 per month, right? So if you take that same calculation, now 
follow me on this. The first thing we did is took a median home price, put in an average qualified loan, 20% down. Um, how much would that payment be? And we're going to be talking about how this, um, what the affordability price is. So I pull out my calculator. I take my $84,000 a year and I divide that by 12. So this person's making about $7,000 uh, a month gross. And I'm going to divide that. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to multiply that by 0.3. So this person, according to most banks, could afford about $2,100 a month mortgage payment. Just on average, these numbers aren't to the, you know, down to the nickel. What you're looking at is affordability. So in this particular case, if the median household income in Santa Clarita, which is where uh, our office is, is $84,000 a year, and the median home price is $497 uh, to sell, then what that says is we're, we're a little bit outside or a little bit above um, affordability index, right? The person buying this house would have to, would have to actually have, be, be using more than 30% of his income to pay for his house which is what banks want to see. Banks want to see that um, people are only using about 30, maybe a, sometimes 33% of their income going towards their mortgage payment or their house. So this is how we calculate our affordability index. As I, I also did Phoenix while I was cruising to the office this morning, and I want to share that with you as well. So the average median, uh, not average, median, used median, median home price, median home price in Phoenix is $205,000 and the median income in Phoenix, uh, median um, household income in Phoenix is 40, 48,600. Very similar, uh, very similar numbers, but you'll see that these numbers will correlate. Um, in almost every market. In fact, what I would really encourage you guys to do, you guys that are checking this out, do this in your town, do this in your target market, punch in the numbers and put them in the comments. I think it'd be really interesting to see what the affordability index really looks like. So in Phoenix, if we have a $205,000 um, mortgage, 20% down, current interest rates and things like that, there's roughly a $1,150 a month mortgage uh, payment to buy that house with 20% down, right? PITI, all of the affordability things. But the $48,000 a year, let's do the math on that, but I'm gonna take my $48,000 um, salary, divide that by 12, and then multiply that by 0.3, and that gives me a affordability of about, the median income, median household income, mortgage affordability is $1,200 a month in Phoenix. The median uh, home price is 205, which with a traditional conventional loan with a good down payment and decent credit has a 1150 a month payment. So unlike my California market, Phoenix has actually an affordability deficit. What that means is that they have more room to go up. It means home prices could go up without income going up. And they would still, people would, the median person, the average Joe, the middle class dude working hard, busting his ass, making this money, could have still afford a house. So they've got more room to climb.